Hi, as a USCCA instructor and range officer, today I want to talk about four universal gun safety rules and how to apply them in real life. First, I want to let you know that my backyard in this direction is connected to 15 acres of common ground. So there's no house back there, just a lot of wood. So this is safe direction. Rule number one, treat every gun as loaded gun. What does that mean? Don't touch it, don't pull the trigger. Well, that could all apply to it, but what it really means, first you have to make it safe. Well, this has magazine in it, and this has a cylinder, and that does not have magazine in it. It really doesn't matter what kind of gun it is, or how well you know your gun. Remember, they are loaded, so first thing, make it safe. First, drop your magazine out, make sure it is empty, visibly check, and leave your slide open. And physically check, make sure there's nothing in there. And look down the ejector port and make sure you can see the floor. And at this point, this gun is safe. And putting your pistol downrange, you can leave it on the table. Now with the revolver, pop the cylinder open. Visibly check, make sure there's nothing in there. And with the cylinder up and pointing downrange, you can leave it on the table. And the pistol that does not have a magazine does not mean this is empty. You might have one in the cylinder. So same thing, visibly check. Leave your slide open, look down the ejector port, and physically check, make sure there's nothing in there. And again, at this point, it's safe, leave it on the table. So rule number one is actually make your gun safe. Rule number two, do not point your muzzle at anything that you're not willing to destroy. This sounds really obvious, but let's apply this to real life. It does not mean you should point your gun up or down unless you have no other choice. Your gun should point in the direction of the target at all times. Now at the range, common mistakes that I see are the following. First is the magazine. I have large hands, so it's not a big problem, but I've seen people with a smaller hand, they have a hard time reaching their magazine release. So they would actually turn their gun so they could drop the magazine. If you turn it too much, then that could be a problem. Now, instead of turning your gun, you should turn your body and drop the magazine. That way, it's safe. And also, after removing your magazine, and you want to leave your action open, and putting the gun forward, and pushing open the action level up, it's not easy. So, in many cases, I see them doing this. But your gun is pointing at the wrong direction. So in this case, instead of turning your gun, you want to turn your body to the side, rack it, and then leave it open. And I even seen people while they're shooting and they have their friends behind them and their gun is loaded. And I seen them turning around and talking to their friends. Very, very dangerous. So honestly, when somebody's shooting, it's best not to say anything, just watch them shoot. And if you have to talk to your friends about whatever, put your gun down and turn and talk. After shooting it, their slide is open. So they know they're safe, but still after missing a target, they're a little embarrassed or whatever the reason is, I seen them swinging their gun and turning around. Very dangerous. It freaks everybody out. So again, at Dreamman, my command is make it safe, holster, and then you could do whatever you want. And I see a lot of people when they're shooting their pistols or rifle and it gets jammed and they panic a little bit and they're a little embarrassed. So they're trying to see what the problem is. And I even seen people pointing their gun upward, trying to look down the barrel to see what the problem is. Very, very, very dangerous. First thing you have to do is drop your magazine, work the action, and if that still doesn't clear it, leave your gun down, pointing it the right direction, and call for help. And lastly, I seen people when they're done with shooting and they want to case their gun, and they take their gun, pointing over, go to their gun case, and then releasing the action, and pulling the trigger, and that's when you're gonna hear a lot of officers screaming at you. Again, if you wanna do anything like that, do it at the shooting bench, drop your magazine, work the action, make sure it's empty, and then pull. Pour it over, turn around, go to your case, and case it. Now, if possible, I would recommend you to have your gun case at the shooting table, and you could case it pointing down the range, and that's the best way. So muzzle control is essential. And again, do not point at anything or any direction that you are not willing to destroy, meaning kill. Rule number three, do not put your trigger finger into the trigger guard until you're ready to fire. Now, this also sounds really obvious, but you have to understand, as a medical doctor I could tell you right now, since we are little babies, our body has a muscle memory to grab everything with five fingers. So if you give your baby anything, they're gonna grab it like this. So we have muscle memory embedded into our brain when somebody gives you something, or when you wanna grab something, you wanna grab it with all five fingers that includes index finger. 
In fact, medically, our hand movement is made like that. So when you grab something with all five fingers, it's easy. But if you're trying to move it without the index finger, it's a little difficult. So this takes training. So you have to build new muscle memory that will isolate the index finger and have other four fingers move separately. So practice, practice, practice. Now this is most important when you're doing draw and fire. As I mentioned before, when you grab your gun, our muscle memory wants to grab it with all five fingers and pull it out. And that's where the most excellent fire happens. And you really have to get a decent holster. So when you draw, your index finger is automatically outside the trigger guard. So when you pull out, and as you come up pointing to the target, you could put your finger in. Now, this is why we practice dry fire and I make sure everybody has their index finger out until they're ready to shoot. And when I feel comfortable, they move on to light fire. And the fourth rule is know your target and beyond. So what does this mean? When you go to your target range, you have your target and everything is safe. But even at this safe shooting range, I've seen people shooting at somebody else's target or even a wooden block with numbers on the ground. I know this sounds crazy, but they do it. So you must shoot only at your target because at a different angle, you don't know where your blade is going or where it's gonna ricochet and cause serious damage. Now this really apply more to an outdoor range because you have trees. You might think it's safe, but you really have to know what's beyond those trees and the leaves. So one of the main reasons that I bought that property, our dreamland, was that our shooting range is sitting in the ravine surrounded by natural barn or natural backstop with a stiff uphill. Now, even here, we don't put target on toward the top because again, you might shoot a little higher and you never know where your blade is going. So everything has to be at the safe height, safe direction, and safe everything. Now, we talked about not pointing your gun upward or downward. This also applies here. Anywhere your gun is pointing is potentially your target. So if you're pointing upward in the city or not even in the city, you never know where your blade is landing and what kind of damage it could cause or pointing downward, it could ricochet and cause serious damage. So at all points, when you're not firing, your gun has to come to a high ready position, pointing at the target, where you could visually see what's down the range, and this will be the safest. Now in a self-defense situation, if you see a gunman open fire, and you really want to save everybody, so you get into a shootout, and if you bullet hit somebody, it doesn't matter how good your intentions were, it becomes your responsibility. So if you see a gunman and you know there are other people around, you should never open fire, but you should hide and call 911 and you really shouldn't fire your gun unless you're in immediate danger and that's the only way you could be on the right. Now I don't want to get into any kind of weird scenario, but if you're in a situation that you know for a fact you could save a lot of people's life and you have a clear shot at the criminal without possibility of innocent bystander, that's really up to you but I'll take the shot. Okay, so there's four universal gun safety rules and how to apply it. I hope this video helped. If you want to learn more about self-defense and real defense shooting, then go to my playlist. And here we have Real Defense Academy and you click the bottom part. And this playlist is dedicated to only self-defense and real defense shooting. And I will be uploading more videos as I proceed. Also, if you're interested in taking my defensive shooting classes, please check my webpage, realdefenseacademy.net. Please browse through and you can also sign up for my classes from here. Thank you.